um, so good morning uh, everybody i'll be taking you through the agenda for today which is uh, the next generation finance solution focusing uh, the topic around treasury cash and receivables management so i have uh, uh, around 30 minutes for the session and i'll uh, try to give you whatever are the primary um, capabilities of each one of the solution followed with a very small demonstration of the capabilities so uh, as far as the uh, office of cfo uh, solution portfolio is concerned what you see on the screen is a whole gamut of uh, solutions which are relevant for uh, the chief financial officer um, uh, nevertheless i'll be covering uh, two topics for now uh, the first one being treasury which encompasses the payments and bank communication cash and liquidity debt and investment management financial risk uh, commodity and treasury governance uh, then uh, the other topic which i'll be covering would be order to cash uh, mainly the receivables pro process and what uh, um, enhancements capabilities sap has developed as part of the innovations in this area coming first to the treasury solution uh, the sap treasury management is a comprehensive set of uh, treasury and risk management applications that are fully integrated into the sap s4 hana finance and uh, they uh, are they are enabled to exchange data from sap and non sap systems as you all are aware that uh, treasury as such cannot operate in silos so you have a treasury which uh, uh, requires uh, integration to external uh, systems and uh, it also is an end-to-end -end integration for finance processes uh, uh, which kind of eliminates all uh, manual data entries that's because uh, you can integrate it with uh, both the finance as well as uh, banks uh, on the other side and, and then you have the financial markets uh, on the external uh, interface side so with this you have an integrated end-to-end -end straight, straight to processing system for treasury uh, which uh, automates the all processes of treachery. And uh, the most important aspect is the accounting side of it. Uh, so you have a system which brings all the uh, debt, investment, foreign exchange, trade finance, all on a single platform and helps you to account for that uh, in, in, in the IS, uh, IFRS or any local gap reporting. In terms of uh, the architecture, uh, this uh, screen broadly uh, explains how it uh, uh, all fits in. So it is part of the s hana core digital core. So it just, just as you have uh, other modules like material management, SD, etc., you have treasury management, which is an extension of the s hana capability, uh, which uh, uh, takes care of uh, the debt and investment management, foreign exchange, trade finance, cash management, payments, uh, as part of the uh, core functionality, which runs on the uh, HANA database. Uh, so you can run it on premise as well as on cloud. And on the other side, on the right hand side, you see a, a host of external systems which can be integrated. So whether it is banking systems or uh, digital payments or any business networks like SWIFT, they can be integrated. On the right hand side, too, you see external interfaces which are critical for the treasury as a process for information um, uh, in inflow so that you can uh, uh, do all kind of uh, risk analysis whether it is credit risk or exposure analysis or market risk analysis you need external interfaces where, from rating agencies from uh, trading platforms from information providers market information providers so sap gives you such a ready to uh, connect ready to uh, build uh, connectors as far as treasury is concerned so it supports uh, the entire ecosystem of connected processes and at the same time automates your uh, treasury process so this uh, particular um, um, slide uh, showcases the overall capability of uh, treasury uh, in in a single slide so you have uh, what is called as the transaction manager uh, which is the core of the uh, process uh, which includes um, uh, the deal capture um, deal execution correspondence management, settlement and payment, and valuation and accounting. So uh, with that, you have a front office, uh, back office, and accounting process uh, capability all in one. So in the front office, you have the position and deal capturing uh, possibilities. And then in the back office, you've got the standing instruction, correspondence, netting, settlement, rate fixing, et cetera. So all these uh, uh, corporate actions, process monitors, all this is uh, catered to in the back office. And finally, the accounting, where you have flexible accounting determination, accounting according to many international accounting standards. 
as far as uh, the uh, instruments are concerned, they are broadly categorized in these uh, uh, heads, money market, foreign exchange, derivatives, debt, and man debt management, securities, trade, finance, and commodities. So below them uh, are the uh, individual product types or instruments which are listed. So you have the fixed term deposit, commercial paper, spot, forward swap. So these are uh, only a sample of the um, product types. There are a host of other product types as well, bonds, bank loans, commercial paper, which are variants of these instruments. Letter, letter of credit, bank guarantee, the entire process of trade finance uh, is captured in this process, in this product capability. And on the right hand side, you see um, the various uh, reports uh, capability, uh, where you can do your positions, performance, risk ratio, compliance, uh, mid office risk exposure, uh, controlling and compliance. Uh, if you want to export data into uh, external systems, that is possible, whether it is uh, business warehouse for additional reporting or any ad hoc reporting requirements, all that is uh, captured here. And then you have the uh, risk analyzers uh, to mainly to do the uh, risk analysis of the treasury portfolio. Includes credit risk analyzer for uh, exposure uh, limit monitoring and uh, market risk analyzer to do your market risk, uh, uh, mark to market, net present value calculation and portfolio analyzer to analyze the overall portfolio. Over and above this, you also have a hedge management uh, capability, which helps you to do the exposure management and hedge accounting for foreign exchange. So, which means it is uh, inherently integrated with underlying SAP, SD, and MM module, where uh, your export orders, your purchase orders, sales orders are all linked for their exposures. And based on the underlying exposure, uh, the treasurer can take a foreign exchange forward call. So um, in terms of um, the process, you have the uh, financial transaction lifecycle being captured in the system, uh, right from uh, a deal, deal request to deal execution and capture, uh, correspondence uh, and confirmation, settlement and payment, valuation and accounting, reporting and analytics. So you have a host of uh, uh, transactional reports and analytical reports coming out of Treasury as well. Now, uh, in terms of uh, uh, market risk analyzer, uh, you can uh, system comes in with a lot of engines, which helps you to do the profit and loss distribution, exposure analysis, gain loss, and profit and loss uh, uh, mark to market, net present value, sensitivity, duration, convexities. These are some of the simulations that can be done for the portfolio of the organization. So, uh, so now I'm uh, coming to the next capability, which is uh, cash and liquidity management. This is also another uh, very uh, important and uh, uh, critical functionality as far as cash and liquidity reporting is concerned. So uh, the first one is the bank account management, where the system has capability to centrally manage all the bank accounts and signatories. So if the organization has got uh, transactions uh, with uh, a host of banks, number of banks, so uh, managing the signatories, authorized signatory is a, a really a challenge because the signatory is, uh, may get transferred, they may exit the company, there may be new people who are joining the company and uh, authorized signatories have to undergo a change. A person may be on leave and so on and so forth. So all these uh, centralized uh, bank account and signatory management is one of the very important uh, uh, capability which SAP has added to the cash management functionality. Apart from that, uh, all the uh, uh, reporting aspects where uh, the cash position analysis can be drilled down. You can have multi-dimensional um, cash reporting, whether it is bank and or bank or bank group or currency. Uh, legal entity wise, uh, profit center, plant wise, depending on uh, the organization structure, uh, the system is capable to give you that such a cash position and forecasting report. So um, uh, along with uh, the uh, payment monitoring. So this is uh, a, a very important uh, capability here. Now coming to uh, the receivables uh, management part. Now, uh, before I uh, get into the receivables management side, I'd like to show you a small demonstration around uh, the cash management uh, piece where um, uh, the organization can have a view of the uh, cash uh, reports and cash positions. So based on the integration of, of uh, <clears throat> I hope my screen is visible. Yes, mother. Yeah, okay, great. 
So, um, so this cash management basically uh, gives you the visibility of uh, cash position across the organization. <coughs> I'm sorry. So it gives you the KPI of what is the cash uh, position available today. And uh, from here, you can actually uh, drill down to the cash uh, report. Now, the, all this is on the s treasury and cash management system. So you can uh, analyze it by country, by, uh, by, by, by bank group, as I mentioned, or by legal entity, which is company or bank and currency, uh, and, and by uh, cash items. So you can actually have this visibility of cash position across the organization by bank or by bank account wise. You can further drill down uh, right up to the transaction level um, in terms of a, a kind of a, high, a drill down reporting hierarchy. So you can drill down for a particular bank uh, and a currency and a country. You can drill, drill down the cash flow by currency. So you have the currency, the legal entity, and the bank account. So with this, you can uh, get all the visibility of inflows and outflows across uh, uh, various uh, date dimensions. So daily, weekly, monthly, uh, and so on. So you can get to that. And then you, uh, the system also is, uh, has the inbuilt capability to transfer funds from one bank account to another with appropriate approvals and um, audit trail. So it has a complete audit trail for moving funds from one bank account to another. So with this, you have uh, the complete visibility of uh, cash uh, position across uh, um, currency, across uh, bank accounts, across legal entities. So uh, that gives you a, a, a complete pr perspective of enterprise-wide cash uh, reports. So that is uh, something that uh, is there. Now, when it comes to the treasury uh, functions also, so you have uh, a host of uh, uh, reporting uh, capabilities, uh, which are part of the new uh, offerings, which SAP has provided over and above the transactional uh, capabilities, which I just mentioned, which automates the uh, transactions. So here you, you can actually have a view of uh, the credit line, do a credit line analysis, then you can, um, this gives you an overview of the treasury executive dashboard, which gives you liquidity by region, liquidity by company code, liquidity by currency, and financial position by the group. You can see, uh, drill down to the cash position forecast by region, by legal entity, and uh, by bank, by bank account. So uh, you, you can actually further get into the uh, details of uh, the counterparty risk as well, where you can you can view um, the risk uh, position. I mean, whatever is the uh, counterparty risk, and you can see the cash position by account, by bank, by uh, bank account. So with this, you it, you can also have a view of the liquidity forecast uh, across uh, uh, the organization. So this gives you a view of uh, where you are as far as the bank relationship is concerned. So whether it is fund based or non fund based uh, um, exposure. Uh, as an enterprise, you have a comprehensive view of uh, fund and non-fund based exposure across various banks. So this is uh, possible uh, as a part of the standard functionality and uh, together with uh, the uh, market risk uh, um, uh, and uh, credit risk uh, capabilities, system gives you this uh, comprehensive view of uh, the um, organization. So whether it is uh, daily sales outstanding, or uh, your cash positions across uh, um, legal entities, uh, across uh, um, um, currencies, all this is very much uh, possible here. So, uh, so this is giving you a snapshot of uh, what is possible uh, as far as uh, the treasury functionalities is concerned. Now coming back to uh, the cash and liquidity management and then the receivables management part. So receivables management here uh, typically covers the uh, credit risk um, of uh, the counterparty followed by uh, management of payments, uh, uh, resolving of uh, disputes, cash collection, settlement, and uh, reconciliation of the account. So um, uh, at this point in time, I would like to uh, just ask whether I should stop for uh, uh, a few questions or should I continue to the next topic of receivables management? Because this is a, a logical end of uh, treasury and uh, cash management. Receivables is uh, basically a new topic uh, altogether. Madhu, please go ahead. Uh, we will take up the questions after this.
Okay, thank you. Thank you, Shalaka. So, uh, yeah, coming to receivables management. Now, receivables management is part of the order to cash uh, process. And uh, as far as capability is concerned, it comprises of broadly three, uh, three capabilities. The first one is your uh, the credit uh, uh, risk uh, management part, counterparty uh, credit. Uh, so whether it is the credit of your dealers, credit of your customers, credit worthiness of your uh, uh, business partners, all that is uh, uh, managed uh, with the capability of uh, credit management, which is part of the receivables management. And then you have the payment handling. So when the customers pay, uh, how do you manage the payments? How do you clear the payments? How uh, you can bring in efficiencies and automation as far as uh, payments uh, is concerned? That is uh, captured as far as the payments is concerned and payment clearing. Then it is grievance redressal and grievance ma management, uh, which, which is part of the disputes uh, management process. So here, you have uh, customers disputing on a particular invoice or maybe on a line item of the invoice. So these disputes need to be uh, managed well in terms of a process, and they also have to be resolved uh, in a timely manner. So ensuring that the grievances are well uh, controlled and managed, and uh, the customer interaction and relationships are uh, maintained uh, to the highest levels. So that is part of the disputes management. And uh, the last part is uh, typically the collections part. So how do you collect uh, the outstanding? How the system can help you in prioritizing the collections? How do you strategize the collections? Uh, so, and who, whom should be collecting it? And how should you follow up for collections? So how can the system help you in doing all that? So collection management is another capability, which is part of the receivables management. So in effect, uh, receivables management centralizes, automates, and simplifies the process of customer receivables. So it gives you the uh, KPIs of overdue receivables, the future receivables. It also uh, gives you a visibility of the daily sales outstanding, credit limit utilization. So generally companies have internal credit limit and external credit limits, and there are certain tolerance levels for credit uh, limit utilization based on which the business is uh, uh, conducted. So all those aspects of uh, control and reporting are all captured as far as receivables is concerned. Then there is um, automation part. So how do you automate the credit uh, uh, evaluation? How can uh, the credit evaluation be monitored based on payment history of the customer? At the same time, suppose it's a new customer uh, who, who is coming on, on, on board into the ecosystem. Then how do you evaluate it? For that, typically you would require um, inputs from external credit rating agencies like uh, Chris Hill or ICRA or Dun & Bradstreet. So uh, SAP provides you such integration to external credit uh, rating agencies, wherein you can uh, get those uh, credit uh, profiles of the credit worthiness of those um, customers. And based on which uh, there can be algorithms to uh, define the credit score and ensure that the system automates this entire credit risk aspect. Uh, then comes the dispute resolution part. How do you accelerate the dispute resolution uh, and improve customer service? Uh, so that is, uh, uh, as I mentioned, uh, um, is an important aspect. Now, all of this uh, also helps you in provisioning and provisioning for bad debts and write-offs. So uh, timely provisioning and uh, uh, timely uh, accounting for such uh, uh, write-offs if they are not uh, paid up. So proactively, you can follow up and at the same time, you can also proactively account for the various provisions. So with this, you can improve the daily sales outstanding and working capital management. So this, uh, cap this captures the entire receivables uh, uh, capability. So this screen in short uh, covers uh, what I mentioned earlier in a little more detail, mainly the credit part, where uh, you have the credit exposure monitoring done with the integration with external credit rating agencies provided as a capability. Then you have the collections part where you can strategize the collections. You can set up uh, collection strategies system-driven collection strategies, and accordingly assign uh, uh, agents, assign processors for, or the group of processors to follow up for the collections. So with this, you have a data-driven process control for team management, as well as uh, a, a systematic approach for collections. And finally, the dispute management. So if there are any grievances, how do we record the grievance? How do you set an SLA for such grievances? How do you resolve the grievances, case management, uh, which is part of the uh, dispute resolution. And finally, uh, it will either lead to a debit or a credit note uh, or a adjustment uh, to the invoice. 
So th that is something which is done. And uh, lastly, it also integrates with the payment part. So whether it is integration with the banks or uh, bringing in the uh, customer uh, payment remittance advice uh, in electronic format, reading that uh, through an uh, OCR, and then uh, matching the invoice line item and ensuring that the uh, clearing happens. Now this is where machine learning and robotic process automation can be put to use and SAP has provided certain innovations in this area, especially when it comes to cash receipt and cash clearing. So with this, you can actually have uh, an overview of the uh, daily sales outstanding. Now here again, I just like to um, uh, conclude with uh, a small demonstration around uh, uh, the collections part and followed which we can uh, then uh, uh, wait for the questions. So just let me know once you're able to see my screen. So um, are you able to see my screen here? Accounts receivables, collection and dispute? Yes, yes ma'am. Yeah, okay, great. So, um, so, so the, the daily sales outstanding uh, uh, reporting, for example, this gives you a view of uh, the aging analysis. Uh, and, and this is uh, near real time where uh, you have uh, all the uh, reporting uh, possible. So you have the KPIs of daily sales outstanding uh, available here. And uh, so based on which you can view the um, daily sales outstanding by period or uh, by customer, by company, by plant, by profit center, depending on however is your organization structure set up, you can view the daily sales outstanding. Now, these are reports which are coming out of the core uh, SAP system. So they are not uh, any report coming out of any uh, business warehouse, et cetera. They are transactional reports. And these are some of the uh, multidimensional reports which are available in the new S4 HANA system where you can uh, visualize uh, uh, custom, uh, daily sales outstanding by by customer, by period, et cetera. And from here, you can actually drill down to the customer line items where you can, this is your uh, customer line item available. And from there, you can actually drill down right up to the transaction uh, level. So with this, you can you can, uh, anal uh, you can filter it and, and uh, get to the details of uh, the reports uh, from here. So you can uh, have a complete view of the daily sales outstanding uh, report analysis, or you can drill down or to a particular customer and particular customer's line item uh, over here. So at the same time from here, you can actually uh, create correspondence, uh, block for dunning, block for payment or unblock for payment. So all that is possible. And then uh, the next part, uh, the next capability is the collections uh, module, where I, I was talking about the setting up of uh, various strategies for collection, based on which the customer uh, collection work list gets generated and uh, you can assign it to uh, collection groups. So this typically can be used as a, a process for uh, shared service. Just like you're having the shared services uh, for accounts payable in most cases, you can have a shared services for collections as well, where a central collection team can uh, run after the outstanding uh, across various legal entities. So you can assign it to a particular specialist, you can, uh, you can uh, uh, monitor the collection process progress, uh, by 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 group by by collection agent etc and ensure that uh, you are collecting it on time uh, and with a strategy in place it's not that you're just uh, doing it with some report ad hoc reports so there is a, a strategy uh, which is in place which ensures that the priority is system driven so this system driven priority is uh, generated based on the strategy that you have configured in the back end so um, for example in this there is a collection rule which is set up, uh, which has some valuations for each of those uh, violations. For example, if the total all item overdue since 14 to 14 days, uh, uh, a total amount is larger than 5,000 euros, then the valuation is 20. So accordingly, every um, um, uh, rule has a valuation uh, here, weighted average, and then you can actually have come to a particular score. And based on the score, uh, uh, the priority is determined by the system and uh, accordingly assigned to the particular uh, collection agent who can then run after the outstanding overdue in a very systematic, system-driven, efficient manner. So uh, that is as far as uh, collection is concerned. And parallelly, the system also has got uh, capabilities for recording all the communication. So uh, communication with the customer uh, and the customer, can, you can um, create a correspondence right here and there, and then uh, you can raise a dispute 
and uh, customers promise to pay can also be recorded now uh, customers promise to pay uh, is something that uh, um, um, helps you in uh, re forecasting the cash flow uh, of the customer receivables so this gives you the uh, aging analysis of the due and due date uh, grid uh, based on the number of days which is the uh, overdue so with this you can actually co correspond to the customer right here without any uh, moving of uh, uh, screens or in terms of transaction codes, et cetera. All of that is part of the entire collection process. So here you can uh, raise a dispute or you can create a promise to pay, which is nothing but a uh, promised uh, future date when the customer is supposed to pay. Now this can give you a, a, a precise uh, cash flow uh, for re receivables, as well as it can be used for provisioning, bad debt provisioning. So in terms of uh, the promised dates, so if it is crossing beyond say 180 days or uh, whatever number of days uh, is, is the bad debt provisioning requirements, the, you, you, this report can be very well used for bad debt provisioning. And if there is a, a dispute, then disputes can be recorded and each dispute will then get uh, a, a case ID and based on which uh, the, uh, the disputes can be resolved uh, at the earliest through a system driven process.